Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Enhancement Shaman Guide for Mythic Plus in Season 4 of Dragonflight. First time I take a crack at the DPS guide but I love the class so much and it's also so complicated that every guide has something new to teach you no matter how long and hard you played it. And since some of you requested it, here we go. Before we start though, a few disclaimers. The first important thing is that Enhancement Shaman is a class and spec that has no cooldowns. You've probably heard many times this is a 1 minute DPS class, this is a 2 minute class etc. Enhancement Shaman is none of this. You have a couple of skills that look like cooldowns but your other skills reduce the cooldown of them. So you're basically pressing all of your buttons on cooldown. And the other important part is that you have a cap when it comes to AoE damage. So at the end of the day you'll be doing constant damage throughout the dungeon but if there is enormously big pool you'll be lacking behind a little bit. The last thing to mention, we'll be going through the elementalist spec which is quite complicated to play but it's definitely superior right now. There is a different spec, a storm spec that relies on procs and it's much more simpler to play and you can be quite successful with it especially in lower keys but now we're going to focus on the superior build which is the elementalist. Your main goal as an enhancement shaman is to generate a resource called maelstrom and then spend it to do even more damage. There's a whole bunch of talents that allow you to have up to maximum of 10 stacks of maelstrom and spend them all at once enhancing the abilities that you're gonna be using them on and making them instacast if they have a cast time. So in that regard your main generator and the button that you're gonna be pressing the most is called Lava Lash. On its own that's not a very powerful skill but it has a lot of talents and other abilities that it synergizes with very well. When you're using that skill you want to be hitting targets that have flame shock ticking on them while you have your flame tongue weapon imbue active which will be up 100% of the time anyway. Doing so is not only going to generate maelstrom but it's also going to spread your flame shocks to additional targets up to 6. It's going to increase the flame shock tick damage on your current target by 100% and the flame shocks themselves every tick is going to increase the damage of your next lava lash and reduce its cooldown. So that creates a pretty nice loop, the more flame shocks you have rolling, the lesser the cooldown of your lava lashes and the more damage it's going to do spreading even more flame shocks. You can even get hot hands proc which reduces the cooldown of lava lash significantly and increases its damage even further but we're going to talk about this later on when we get to the rotation section. Your next generator is called Ice Strike, this one is pretty simple, it does a bunch of damage and it increases the damage of your next Frost Shock by 100%. This is actually very important because it's going to be a significant part of your AoE rotation because of the Hailstorm talent, which further increases the damage of your Frost Shock based on the Maelstrom that you're gonna be consuming and it also makes it cleave to up to 5 additional targets. Maelstrom generator number 3 is called Storm Strike. This one is pretty low priority in this build. You're only going to be pressing this if every other button is on cooldown but it still generates Maelstrom and it still does damage. And last but not least we have Crash Lightning. This one is effective only if you have 2 or more enemies in front of you as it does AoE damage but it also makes the other generators that we mentioned so far to start cleaving and doing AoE damage as well. It's also important to know that every enemy that you hit has a chance to generate a maelstrom stack so keeping that 12 second buff in AoE situations is actually very very important. So your goal is to generate 10 maelstrom that you can spend on other abilities and it's almost the same if you're doing this in a single target situation or AoE. Lava Lash is basically the highest priority because not only does damage but it spreads the flame shocks if it's AoE situation, then you Ice Strike and if none of them are available you press Storm Strike. If you have 3 or more targets you always want to open with Crash Lightning so you have the buff rolling and your other abilities do extra AoE damage and you want to maintain that 12 second buff all the time. Two important notes to make in this section. First, you're gonna be pressing these buttons in the Maelstrom generation phase. As soon as you hit 10 Maelstrom, you're gonna be pressing in between different buttons in order to spend that Maelstrom. We'll look into those skills in the next section. 
and the only exception to that rule is in a single target situation where you get a hot hands proc. When that happens, during those 8 seconds you want to be pressing Lava Lash every other global cooldown, or basically as soon as it's available, even if that means that you're gonna be overcapping a little bit of Maelstrom because this is going to generate the most amount of damage, again this is only for single target. And having said that, let's look next in how you're gonna be spending your Maelstrom. As soon as you hit 10 Maelstrom stacks you need to press a button to spend that Maelstrom and do even more damage and there are 3 main skills that do that. Important note here, all the spells that you're going to see have a cast time but because of the maelstrom that cast time is reduced down to zero so they're actually instant. Your heaviest hitter is called Elemental Blast, this one has a 12 second cooldown and you usually have 2 stacks of it in the build that we're gonna be running. It also gives you extra stacks and it's so powerful that you wanna be using that even if there are 3 targets around you. It's still more beneficial to press that and hit a single target for a lot of damage than cleaving all three, let's say with Chain Lightning. If Elemental Blast is not available or in some other specific situations that we're going to cover in the rotation section, you're gonna be spending your Maelstrom on a Lightning Bolt on a single target. This one is pretty straightforward, it just smacks your target for a bunch of nature damage. And then in AoE situation 3 plus targets you're gonna be using Chain Lightning which cleaves and don't be fooled by the tooltip here. It doesn't hit just 3 targets as you're gonna be running the Crashing Storm's talent which extends the amount of targets that the Chain Lightning jumps to and it buffs its damage. And basically that's it, those 3 spells are the spells that you're gonna be pressing to spend your Maelstrom on but there's also something else that's very important to mention here as it makes this whole build click together. We already mentioned the Hailstorm talent which increases the damage of your Frost Jog based on the amount of Maelstrom weapon that you spend and it also makes it cleave to additional targets. That of course is further enhanced if you pressed Ice Track before that as well buffing the damage of Frost Jog even more. So although this is not a Maelstrom spender you need to press Frost Jog every time you press a Maelstrom spender skill so that you take advantage of the Hailstorm talent. This is very important for the elementalist build as Frost Shock at the end of the dungeon is going to be one of the top damaging spells, if played correctly. Alright, so the first thing to say about spenders is that it's okay to spend if you have 8 or 9 stacks instead of 10, so don't hesitate to press those buttons if there is nothing else available to generate more stacks. On single target you'll be pressing elemental blast but there is a little note to make here. You want to be pressing that button only if you have feral spirits active. We're going to be talking about this skill in detail in just a little bit but it buffs your elemental damage significantly so you always want to combine it with your heaviest hitter, namely elemental blast. And since that spell has 2 stacks even if you don't have feral spirits active it's okay to spend one of the stacks without them. But if you don't have the Pharaoh Spirits active and you only have one available stack, press Lightning Bolt instead. That's all you do for single target and if you have 3 or more targets you go into the airway rotation where you spend your Maelstrom on Chain Lightning. And that's pretty much it for the spenders with the little agreement that after you spend you have to press your Frost Shock as the buff to its damage that it gets is way too good to ignore even on single target. And that's almost everything you need to know about Enhancement Shaman but there are 2 more skills that we need to talk about before the whole rotation is complete. As Enhancement Shaman you have 2 major cooldowns, the first one being Primordial Wave. This one simply applies a flame shock to your target but more importantly it makes your next lightning bolt hit every single target that has a flame shock on them for increased damage. On top of that you're gonna be running the Primal Maelstrom talent which instantly generates 10 Maelstrom as soon as you press Primordial Wave which means that you can instantly also send the Lightning Bolt fully buffed with full Maelstrom stacks. You're also running additional talent called Splintered Elements which gives you extra haste once you press Primordial Wave, the more targets you hit with Lightning Bolts the more haste you get. And you can do this big burst huge cleave damage every 45 seconds as the cooldown of the spells is advertised. 
but it gets even better. Let's mention the 4 piece tier set bonus over here. Once you cast Primordial Wave, you're summoning additional Feral Spirit, which further increases the damage that you do, but then every Feral Spirit that you summon reduces the cooldown of Primordial Wave by 7 seconds. The Feral Spirit summoned by the Primordial Wave itself counts for that reduction and if you press your Feral Spirit spell as well which summons 2 additional wolves, you get the total reduction of 21 seconds. That makes the cooldown of Primordial Wave only 24 seconds which means that you can send the spell multiple times during trash pulls. And that means that no matter what the situation is, 95% of the time you'll be pressing that button on cooldown as soon as it's available. Now let's talk about your other big cooldown, the Feral Spirits themselves. By default they increase your physical damage for 15 seconds and have a long cooldown of 1.5 minutes. However, you're running a couple of talents that change that significantly. Witch Doctor's Ancestry is a 2 point talent that reduces the cooldown of Feral Spirits by 2 seconds for each Maelstrom stack that you generate. We've already talked about the Maelstrom generation skills and it's a matter of just a few globals to press and fill a 10 stack Maelstrom bar, which alone is going to reduce the cooldown of Feral Spirits by 20 seconds. But of course you're not going to stop there, you're going to keep pressing your buttons, generating more Maelstrom, doing more damage and reducing the Feral Spirits cooldown even further. So that original cooldown of 1.5 minutes actually becomes quite short, just to give you an example, during Bloodlust you can generate so much Maelstrom that your Feral Spirits can come back off of cooldown before the previous set disappears in that 15 second window. And since you're using the Elemental Spirits talents which makes it so your wolves buff your elemental damage, that based on RNG can affect different aspects of your damage profile but it always buffs your elemental blast. You want to be pressing that button off of cooldown as soon as it's available as well. Because as long as the woofies are out, you're doing more damage, you're generating Maelstrom and generating more Maelstrom means that you're gonna get them back sooner. And since apparently you're pressing every single button on cooldown, let's talk about order and priority. At the very start of a pool, we want to start with Primordial Wave and then press your Feral Spirits. You want to keep that order so the Feral Spirits reduce the cooldown of Primordial Wave and you have it available again shortly after in 24 seconds. In AoE situation, you want to press Lava Lash next so you spread Flame Shocks around and your Primordial Wave Lightning Bolt hits more targets. You press your Lightning Bolt next, which is already at 10 Maelstrom stacks because of the Primordial Wave. You activate your Crash Lightning buff next and then you press Ice Track followed by a Frost Shock as Frost Shock is already at 10 Hailstrom stacks. Now this is the most general scenario, you can even follow this on single target of course by skipping Crash Lightning and you'll be totally fine. The more you play though, the more different situations you're going to see and you'll find subtle little differences that you can make to improve that opener. For example, in AoE situation, you can fit in an extra Flame Shock before the Lightning Bolt and cast your Crash Lightning before the Lava Lash because this is going to increase your DPS overall but it's also going to delay you casting the Lightning Bolt, which does a ton of damage and having a few globals before that to give your tank more time to get aggro could actually save your life. As it's very easy to pull aggro as Enhancement Shaman and the huge amount of bursts you do in the beginning of the pulls. On single target of course you drop the crash lightning and you can also send elemental blast instead of the lightning bolt as on single target you want to make sure that you're casting Ellie blast with 3 feral spirits active to make sure it hits like a truck and then you delay the lightning bolt for a little bit later. However in the beginning you'll be totally fine if you follow what you see on your screen right now. Master this basic opener and once you have it in your muscle memory you can start to try and tweak it a little bit with more advanced tactics. And now that we've looked at everything, let's tie everything into a rotation. Obviously you start with the opener that we just discussed and after that you wanna cast Primordial Wave and Feral Spirits on cooldown. Keep in mind that Primordial Wave also reduces the cooldown of Feral Spirits as it generates instantly 10 stacks of Maelstrom, reducing the cooldown by 20 seconds. So generally the order does not matter but there are two exceptions where you might want to hold one of those two cooldowns. 
you can hold on Primordia Wave for let's say 5 or 6 seconds if you know that there are certain adds joining the fight shortly and you can spread flame shocks to them and then cleave them with the lightning bolts. And you can hold on Pharaoh Spirits if you know that your Primordia Wave is coming off cooldown in the next 5 or 6 seconds and cast them after you cast a Primordia Wave so you get the full 21 second cooldown reduction. Other than that, you will be pressing your Maelstrom Generator abilities following the priority list that we showed earlier and as soon as you hit 8 or 10 stacks of Maelstrom, you go to the Spenders list and go by priority there. It is going to be a little bit overwhelming at the start as all of your buttons are going to light up at some point and you have to make a decision what to press next. But as with every other thing, the more you play, the more practice you get, the easier it's going to become. Apart from your DPS buttons, you bring a lot to the group in the form of utilities, of course starting with Bloodlust, but there's more to that. You have an AoE stun from the Capacitor Totem and you have a knockup on a relatively short cooldown based on your Thunder Shock ability. If you talent into it, you can dispel curses which is not something that many classes can do. And when it comes to interrupting, not only your interrupt is a very short cooldown but it's also ranged so although you're in melee, you can actually interrupt some mob that is standing away from the group. You can coordinate your ancestral guidance with your healer as it converts your DPS to healing, which could help a lot in a heavy burst AoE situations. You have poison cleansing totem which not only removes poisons but it's also very powerful against the afflicted affix as it can dispel both shades. So you can pretty much solo that affix and you can have hacks to help with the incorporeals. You can use your windrush totem to increase the movement speed of your whole group and purge is particularly useful in some dungeons specifically in season 4. So make sure you're using all of these cooldowns when they're needed to make your group's life easier. When it comes to defensives though, unfortunately things are not looking that bright on that department. Ancestral Shift is your personal defensive, it's pretty good, you can reduce the cooldown to 1.5 minutes but it's still pretty long compared to some other classes. We have to mention Earth Elemental, once you summon that it gives you 15% increased health which is not really a defensive because it doesn't have damage mitigation capabilities but it could be useful if you press it in certain situations. Other than that, you can pick Earth Shield and Healing Stream Totem which are going to help with your self healing and even your group healing a little bit, but they're not powerful at all and I even don't recommend the later one as you have to spare globals dropping it during combat. And last but not least, here's the build that includes everything we've talked about so far. On the right hand side, there's not much to change. There are a couple lucrative talents there, Swirling, Maelstrom and Wind Fury Totem, but there are no points worth dropping for those two, so this is what you want to use for Mythic Plus. And on the left side, I have two extra talents right now running Hex and Purge, but if you don't need those, you can drop them either for Remove Curse, for Poison Cleansing Totem, and if there is nowhere else you need to put them in, you can just throw them in Surging Shields, which is going to slightly increase the healing that Earth Shield does. So that's everything for this Enhancement Shaman Mythic Plus guide, if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and if you want to find out how everything is going to change with the hero talents in the war within, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, now get out of here.